Chapter 6 At first, I decided to tell the police my story. But would they believe me? I had been very ill. When the police learned about my illness, they would think the monster was just one of my bad dreams. I decided that I could not tell anybody. I went home to my family, and they were very pleased to see me. Then they told me that the police had found the murderer. Perhaps you will think that this was good news. But I have not told you who the police had arrested. As I went into the house, I noticed that one person did not come to meet me. It was Justine, the young woman who had looked after the children and who was like a sister to us. And it was Justine that the police had arrested. A few days after the murder, the police had searched the house and had found the gold chain in Justine's coat pocket. Everyone in the family knew that Justine had not murdered William. I knew who the murderer was, but I could not tell anyone. We were sure that Justine would be free after the trial, because nobody could believe that she was a murderer. But we were wrong. The trial did not go well for Justine. There were a number of strange facts that were difficult to explain, and the judge decided that she was the murderer. The punishment for murder was death. We argued and cried. We said she could not murder anyone. But nothing could change the judge's order. So I got up early and went to the judge's house and told him about the monster. He did not believe me. He thought I was lying in order to save Justine's life. In the prison, Justine waited quietly for death. We spent many hours with her, and she spoke calmly and kindly to us. She was happy because we believed that she had not killed William. And she was almost looking forward to death, because then she would be with William and our dear mother in a place of peace. Her love and gentleness added to my great unhappiness. I knew she was going to die because of me. I knew my brother had died because of me. I had brought nothing but sadness and misery to my family. I took a boat and went out on Lake Geneva. Why didn't I end my life then? Two things stopped me. My father was old, and another death would probably kill him, and I had to stay alive to keep my family safe from the monster. Fear for my family and hate for my monster were with me day and night. I became ill again, and Elizabeth's love could not help me. I needed to escape for a while, to leave my unhappiness behind me. So I went to walk alone in the Alps. I hoped the wild beauty of the mountains would help me. Slowly, I became calmer among the beautiful mountains. I learned to sleep again, and for days I did not see anybody. Then one morning I saw a figure coming towards me, faster than any man could go. It jumped easily over the rocks, and I saw with horror the monster that I had created. On his face, was a look of deep sadness, but also of evil. At first I could not speak, because I hated him so much. But at last I said, You 
are an evil creature. I shall kill you if I can, because you have killed two people that I love. The monster's yellow eyes looked at me. I am the unhappiest creature in the world, but I shall fight for my life, he said. I am bigger and stronger than you, but I will not start the fight. I shall always be gentle to you because you are my king and creator. You made me, and you should love me and be kind to me like a father. William and Justine died because you did not love me. Why did you create me if you were not ready to love me? We are enemies, I said. Leave me now, or let us fight until one of us is dead. You are a murderer. How can I be kind to you? You say I am a murderer, the monster said. But you want to kill your own creature. Isn't that wrong, too? I ask you to do one thing for me. Listen. Come with me to a warmer place and listen to my story. Then you can decide. I thought carefully about what he had said. It was true that I had given him life, but I had not given him love. I decided to go with him and listen to his story. He took me to a mountain hut where he lit a fire. We sat down by the fire and he began to tell me his story.